Thank you, Stefan. Um, well, actually, I'm not so much of a uh, Lisp programmer, but uh, really, uh, really an object-oriented programmer, and that's what we'll show in the ta in the talk as well. Because um, what I ca would call myself is a systems programmer, and I started uh, programming systems, at eight-bit systems, uh, some 30 years ago with uh, uh, Z80 and and friends. Uh, and then I was a firm follower of the object-oriented uh, movement that was kind of like the functional programming movement is today in the 1990s. So, 90s. so uh, C++ came to life and Smalltalk was very popular and that was kind of what my uh, heritage was. And then uh, in that, in that uh, time, I was introduced to functional programming through, uh, by the way, of Perl. So actually, Perl was my gateway language to, uh, uh, to treating functions as first-class objects. And then um, in that time, a friend introduced me, introduced me to Common Lisp, and Common Lisp really was an eye-opening thing because it is both uh, a systems programming language and a functional programming language and and also a very nice object oriented language um, so I spent uh, ten years uh, writing applications in common Lisp and um, that will um, show in this talk so this talk is uh, uh, called is closure an acceptable list and lisp and it's it's a variation on the on this uh, on the title of this blog post from 2006 when someone uh, named Eric Kidd uh, claimed that Ruby was an acceptable list, which is, of course, b bullshit. But, um, <laughs> but um, well, some people have different, different uh, opinions. And, of, of course, there was an opinionated talk. And the um, reactions were harsh at part. Uh, and like the smuggest reaction that we that I found and which uh, has become kind of famous is that of Steve Jäger, uh, who said that not even Lisp is an acceptable Lisp. Which I mean, well, he, maybe maybe he's right, maybe he's wrong. But the two things that that uh, Steve Jäger pointed out or asked for was one, for one he claimed that Lisp and he was talking about common Lisp at this time at this when he when he said Lisp. Uh, has has left the roots of uh, what Lisp is really about because it has object-oriented programming and macros and other things that he didn't like. But he also said that uh, Lisp can only be fixed if there would be a, a benevolent di dictator who um, made sure that the language doesn't deviate from the ideals uh, of Lisp itself. So, <laughs> unfortunately, the inventor of Lisp, Steve McCarthy, Carthy, Carthy is dead. And also at that time in the in the 2000s, uh, McCarthy was no longer really involved or no longer involved in Lisp at all. So he was visiting conferences and uh, obviously um, uh, flattered by the fact that he was uh, creating something that people liked. Um, but um, he didn't have any influence, so he didn't really. Uh, uh, fill the, the, the position as a benevolent uh, dictator. And it was left to the people who are using Lisp now and back then to define what the essence of Lisp really is. <coughs> so, Steve Jäger, well, some people would claim Ruby is an, is an acceptable Lisp because it has garbage collection, maybe, or functions. Um, I have a different view, and um, so, so my list of things uh, that I uh, will present you as being the essence certainly are subjective, but maybe they make sense to you. So the um, say most important thing to me uh, is the fact that Lisp is a homo-iconic language, meaning that it uses its own data structures to describe its programs. And even though Common Lisp uh, makes quite some detours and uh, is not quite readable, uh, uh, using just what you know about the data structures of Common Lisp, um, it holds true, and and this opens up uh, several uh, things to the programmer. For one, editing Lisp code becomes very easy, which is no small feat because um, the editor doesn't need to be very smart, and uh, you can have relatively fancy editing tools without, oh, sorry, um, without. Um, employing a lot of programmers doing the refactoring tools for you and whatever it is. So it is, it is very uh, amendable to direct manipulation with 
um, low-level tools. Um, also, what homoiconicity opens up is a simple form to uh, create macros, because uh, in Lisp, you can write programs that create Lisp, and a macro is nothing more than that. It's, it's just a, a small program or a function that creates another function that you then, then evaluate. Uh, and this is also something that is facilitated by parentheses. The next thing, and it's really the other thing that I like about Lisp and that, um, that makes it special for me as a programmer is the fact that it's interactive. So the REPL, the interactive mode of Lisp, is not just something that you also use, but it's the main mode of interacting and developing your programs. And even though, I mean, some people like to always be smart, uh, I, I personally, I'm, I, I think it is, for me, it is important to, uh, to explore problems uh, using code. So, so I am sometimes in the state of the dog and don't know what I'm doing, and I write a little function in the REPL to evaluate and try out things uh, that help me understand the problem, and, that, and then at some point I, I get this aha uh -huh, uh, moment. But um, this is also kind of um, contradicting the, the hammock-driven style development where you sit in your hammock or lie in your hammock until you have the solution and then, then you write it. So for me, this is really about the interactive and exploratory nature uh, of development that it supports. So now, as this is a, a closure conference, um, uh, I will give you some idea of what Common Lisp is about, just so that you know why, well, from the perspective that I just talked about, closure is a Lisp, and we are all fine with that. So what I'll tell, show you now is some differences between uh, Common Lisp and closure that may uh, help you uh, decide that you actually want to program in Lisp and not only in Clojure. So, um, <clears throat> again, this is a subjective list of things um, that Common Lisp has and, it has, and it has other, other things that are really awful, um, but nevertheless. Um, <clears throat> first, uh, to recap where Common Lisp is about and why it has been created, um, it is really a... a, a uh, a, an effort, Common Lisp is an effort to uh, merge uh, several dialects of Lisp into one uh, uh, common, and that's the name, language that would be used for government contracts. And uh, that's why it was funded as an activity by the American uh, government through DARPA, uh, because in the 1980s uh, and 1990s people were interested in writing high-level programming systems uh, uh, in Lisp, and uh, the government wanted to have a common language for that. Um, <clears throat> and this means that Common Lisp itself as a language is also a child of, of, its, of its own age. So, so the, the specification is large, and it contains a lot of things that uh, would be useful at, for a system programmer but um, it also doesn't contain a lot of things that, that you want to, would want to have in a language definition nowadays. Because, for example, it contains file systems and an abstraction across file systems, which is something that existed back then, but it doesn't have threads or, or other things that we expect to be in a language nowadays. Now, <laughs> the, um, the specification is one thing, um, and then there is implementations, and there, as, uh, as of today, there is still a number of implementations of Common Lisp that all implement this uh, common standard, uh, and uh, that have different focuses. So there is a handful of open source implementations. This, this is not exhaustive, but these are the major things. And then there's even some commercial implementations. Each of the implementations have their, their own, say, um, platforms they support. Um, features that they support in addition to the standard, uh, or uh, sometimes it's just someone wants their own Lisp, so they fork and create their own Lisp, which still is a common Lisp. Interesting m might be the, the commercial offerings uh, usually have an IDE, um, or uh, Mocal is an implementation that runs on mobile devices, so you can write mobile applications using common Lisp. Again, this is, well, 
each of the extra features obviously is, is beyond the standard. So whenever you start using the features that your implementation gives you, you are leaving the, the common ground and your problems are non, no longer standard common list problems. So let me get, get into what the standard really has to offer um, first. So, and I'm picking out a few things that you might recognize from Clojure and uh, that are really special in common list. For example, keyword arguments. Keyword arguments uh, in Clojure are there, but they, are not, they don't get a lot of love. Um, so because basically they don't compose well, and usually the last argument in a fun function should be something that you can iterate over so you don't want to deconstruct. Uh, uh, and, and this is why Clojure doesn't really have that. In Common Lisp, they really, in the specification, really got wild about keyword arguments and how to do it properly. So it's not only possible to have named arguments. So in the, well, I have two, two uh, this is two forms. Sorry, I, I got, thought I got rid of this. So this is the invocation of that function. So of course, you can have a, a, a named uh, keyword argument. You can also have a defaulted keyword argument. So B has a default of one if it's not specified. Um, but you can also have a, th a second variable that is set to a true value if, if this argument has been supplied so that you can recognize the default from being uh, defaulted from, be from having been specified. And you can also specify the keyword to be different from the variable name. So as you can see, they spent like hours and hours discussing what they want to have here in here and it's really, I mean, it's keyword arguments to the max. Also, uh, this this um, argument list here is a property list, a plist, which is a common data structure in in uh, common list. So you can have a plist and invoke the function with that plist as arguments, which is nice. Then the other thing that I wanted to point out is dynamic scope. Dynamic scope in common list is something that is not the default, but it's uh, everywhere. Uh, dynamic scope, really, what it really means is that your stack, your call stack, uh, is available as, a, as an abstraction that you need to think about. So for example, you can bind a dynamic variable in Clojure, but in uh, common list, you, also, you can also bind handlers to conditions uh, in the call stack, which means that if, in this case, parse integer uh, throws an error, um, it will be handled, uh, the, this error handler will be called when the error is thrown, before the stack is unwound. And that gives you the, the possibility to, uh, well, of course, look at the stack at that point in time, but also uh, do something before unwinding the stack happens or go to a different place in the, in the call stack rather than uh, uh, with a, uh, like, unlike with an exception where you only get to handle the exception after the stack has been unwound to the point where you handle it. So, so this is like embracing dynamic scope, not only to declare your variables and to define your scope of your variables, but also do, to handle your errors. Um, and while this is kind of nice, and while many of you might have uh, experimented with uh, dynamic variables and closure, uh, it also doesn't work very well if you have concurrency and, and, and threats, because uh, uh, if you have threats and the threats are not very explicit, uh, but created somewhere sometimes, then suddenly you don't have the same stack anymore and all your dynamic bindings uh, are no longer available. And this is something which really shows, also shows the, the programming model, model of uh, common list, which is really not uh, uh, considering multi-threaded programming at all. <coughs> the next thing, and this is like my, my youth, I wasted my youth on object orientation, so uh, I still get something uh, out of looking at object-oriented stuff, um, is the object system. So the common Lisp object system clause uh, is uh, really the most uh, um, sophisticated object system that I have worked with, and is really sophisticated. Not only does it have a very uh, elaborate uh, user surface, but al also it has uh, elaborate uh, metaprogramming facilities. For the user surface, um, it is important to know that uh, instead of attaching methods or activities to classes and objects, um, you define generic functions that are dispatched based on object type. What this means is that 
uh, when in a traditional object-oriented language, you declare uh, a class and then put the actions into the class uh, so that the object which, which is invoked always is uh, one thing. Um, sorry, but I, I guess you understand. Um, <coughs> it's different in common list in that you uh, define functions that are freestanding and that have an argument which defines uh, for which, ob uh, for which uh, argument type uh, this method is invoked. <coughs> the other interesting thing is that generic functions uh, are not functions with one body, but uh, which can have multiple bodies that are executed in a uh, well-defined sequence. So if we, if we here, for example, we have a generic function which is called pass, and one method for that function which is, which is invoked before the main method is invoked if the argument is a door. So um, what the runtime system does, and this is all happening at runtime, at least from the semantic point of view, is it determines which uh, methods are applicable to a certain set of arguments and then invokes the individual methods in the right, in the right order. What this, what, what this also means is because the methods are freestanding and not attached to one class, you can have, uh, dis you can dispatch on multiple arguments like here. So uh, a method compare uh, is defined for apples and oranges and if, if you call it with an apple and an orange, you get this error. So, and you can also define uh, user, you, you can also have user defined method combinations and all that kind of stuff within the standard. So the other thing that is not really part of the uh, common list standard, but it's part of the implementations, uh, all the implementations of clause is the meta object protocol. The meta object protocol is an elaborate system uh, that allows you to define um, the behavior of objects in the, in the meta level without uh, making the behavior visible to the application program. So what we have here is a, a method that is called by the runtime system um, when, uh, when the, the program, can you see this here? I can't, sorry. Too much advertisement, sorry. Uh, so we have a, an invocation of a function called name here uh, uh, that, that uh, wants to read the name of an instance of that class. So <clears throat> usually this class would, would, uh, would just have slots which are like fields or I don't know what they're called in Java, so, so slots in, in, in one in one instance, um, this one is called name, uh, and we want to read that. Now, if we have a different meta class, and that's what we do here, we def define uh, this, this uh, instance to be of a different meta class, then the runtime system uh, uses an elaborate set of protocols to find out that it needs to call this function with the meta class, where we specialize on the instance and the slot that we need to read, and we'll read from a database here. So this kind of stuff can be done within uh, an elaborate set of protocols as well defined, relatively complex, and of course, this is only showing, I would say, a quarter of the code required to make this actually work but it's, it's nice. So these are features in common list that are part of the standard or part of all implementations that are fun to work with uh, if, you, if you don't hate mutable state. I, I mean, it's probably not the right thing to say in this audience, but anyway. So the other thing that um, common list is very well in is supporting the user. And that this is very important to me as I think that um, um, choosing a programming language is mostly a matter of personal preference and then uh, personal preference also is related to how you work with the, with the language and whether it's supportive or it's not supportive. I'm not, well, different people have different opinions, of course, but, but to me it's important that, that uh, the language helps me as a programmer and I also like the interactive nature of languages. So uh, one feature uh, of, of common list is that it supports optimization very well. Uh, instead of measuring and then guessing or measuring and then looking at a stack, tra at stack trace or traces uh, that are in a different language like, like uh, with Clojure where you have to look at Java uh, statistics and stuff like that, um, the, the optimization aids and uh, mechanisms are all built in, into the language. So for example, uh, here, uh, we are interested in optimizing this function which adds one to an argument and returns that. 
And <clears throat> what, we, what I d did here is I, I declared to the compiler that I want to have this be optimized for speed. And the, op uh, the compiler then tells me I cannot optimize the speed really because I don't know what the type of, these argument, of this argument is. So I need to call the generic plus implementation which finds out what the argument types are and does the right thing for big nums and for small nums and for floats and whatever you have, have you. So, so this message is really triggered by the declaration that I have here. Uh, it helps me optimizing. So <coughs> there is, uh, obviously there needs to be way, ways how to improve that situation. So if, if we have this basic function here that we've seen one plus x and return that, we can also tell the compiler what the argument types are to, to, to actually fix that problem. So uh, this is the real function and this is a bunch of declarations that helps us uh, uh, that tells the compiler, okay, we always, we want this to be optimized for speed and don't, uh, are not interested in safety because we always know what we do. And we know that this argument is a fixed number, which is a small integer, a machine integer. And we also want to always return that machine integer because we know that the caller wants to do that. Um, and I, I give it, I, I granted you, I mean, this is the function that we are looking at, and this is, this is the boilerplate that you need to uh, surround it with to make the compiler actually uh, do what you want. But you have the tools for that. So in order to see what's going on, you can compile stuff and then disassemble. So this is the disassembly for F1, which is the unadorned version. And this is the, and, and note here, there's a call to generic plus, and this is expensive. And then um, this is the, optimized version. So it is adding one. This is actually a one. If you want, you, you, I can explain why this is the two, but it's a one. Uh, and then returns it, and that's it. So, so this is, I mean, obviously, in this time, in this case, uh, the, the call overhead would trump the actual operation that's going on. But uh, if you have a, a, this is the way how you can see what is going on, and it's all happening within <coughs> the interactive uh, development experience of, of the uh, commonless REPL. <coughs> um, and then the next thing is sophisticated debuggers, uh, or even debuggers that are beyond, beyond stupid. So, so one thing that, that uh, I happen to be expecting from a debugger is that it tells me the arguments, the arguments that are pass, passed to a function and the local state, because, because that's when, when I need the debugger, I want, to, to, uh, uh, want it to help me with it. Uh, so that's what common Lisp does. And then you can evaluate uh, expressions within a call frame, and you can go to the source, of course, and, and you see, see uh, you, you have much more visibility into the operation of the program in this interactive environment than you have in many other systems, including um, average closure environments. And lastly, and this is kind of uh, uh, funny because uh, uh, it is contrary to what is being discussed in common list all the time is uh, fast startup. So, so uh, to start a, uh, any closure program, you need to start up the JVM. And even if you really, really try hard, it's hard to create, create startup times below half a second uh, unless you do something very fancy. And in common list, you can just dump your whole state to, to an image, and then the startup time will basically be zero. And that's, that's uh, contrary to, to um, many discussions, because uh, even, even just a Hello World type program will be, if you compile it to an image, will be a few megabytes in size, like 20 megabytes or something. And people just complain, it's, it's so large. I don't like that. Um, but, but in the end, uh, systems are really don't care, don't, uh, today don't care about 20 megabytes, and they can start them start them in no time. So <clears throat> startup time is nice. So let's look at closure again. And I'm, I was programming in, in uh, common list for so long that I had some expectations. Um, but um, there are a number of things in closure that I really like. So just uh, to put it in perspect into perspective, I think, well, I, don't, I, I didn't specifically ask Rich Hickey about it, but um, I think the reason why closure is, exists is because there was a big gap between uh, like the 90s and the 2000s where Lisp wasn't developed any further. And uh, Rich Hickey had a lot of, uh, uh, wrote a lot of uh, common Lisp code. He still has some open source libraries. And uh, he was seemingly frustrated that, that there was a disconnect between the current world uh, and what common Lisp could do. So 
many people are not stopped, some people are not stopped by that, but he was. And he created closure uh, as, as a, well, relief from common lisp with influences from scheme, uh, but it's really part of the family when it comes to, to what it can do and how it's implemented. Um, so one thing that I really like about closure is uh, surface syntax. So um, uh, it doesn't stop as having lists as data structures and then composing uh, programs out of lists, but you also have uh, maps and arrays and sets. Sets are really what I, what I, what I like a lot. Then the, the enabling technology uh, that Clojure has, in my opinion, is values and a clear value semantics. So Common Lisp has, I think, five or ten, I, I didn't count them, equality operators that have specific rules, what, what, they, what they consider as being equal, so numbers can be compi compared uh, in a certain way, and objects, and, and then you can compare addresses. It's really confusing, and it's really hindering uh, 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 clear programming and, and closure doesn't have all that. It can just uh, compare two things and if they look equal, they are equal and that's really the enabling technology for immutability and for, for, uh, for everything else. So that's really, for, from, my, from my programmer perspective, it's really a big thing. And I also like the sets. <laughs> but uh, then, the question is, how do I get my programs fast? And I guess you are not uh, fans of the Ask toolbar, toolbar, which usually comes with this, but, but um, <coughs> the, the, uh, the uh, advantage of Clojure uh, compared to Common Lisp is that a lot of engineering goes into the, into the runtime system. So instead of going through assembly code and uh, declaring your argument values, you can get a lot of traction by just leveraging uh, the underlying technology that is, uh, that is really, really sophisticated. And I, I do really like that. I mean, it has its limits, uh, uh, and it, uh, there are certain, certain things that you cannot just get, cannot get fast be because you don't have the tools to do that. But for the things that I usually do at daytime, uh, the um, JIT optimization is just great. And I also like the fact that it is a hosted language and that, uh, ex that the, hosted lang the, the host is actually a safe environment where in, in, in common list you interact with C libraries and if you have a, a passive pointer that po points to nowhere, it crashes your whole system. Uh, with, with Clojure you have either, either the JIT or JavaScript and uh, you cannot crash the whole thing just by passing a bad pointer in. So that's kind of friendly and nice. Um, and finally, uh, the, well, not finally, almost finally, um, uh, the libraries are great too. And one thing that I really like, I mean, uh, it is one thing to have closure libraries, but uh, it's also uh, good to embrace the platform and then being able to, uh, to include platform libraries with the same mechanism and not having to reach out for, for another package manager to include platform libraries and then for the closure libraries to use this. This is really nice, so Maven is, is a big plus here for me. Um, Common Lisp also has a good library management system, but it only works because nobody is using Common Lisp, and well, the, the set of people who need it is so small that it can be maintained by one person. It's nice, but, but it, it doesn't scale. Um, <coughs> and the community uh, is also very nice. So, um, uh, and contrasted to the common list community where, where there is a lot of fragmentation and everyone has a, has, a, has a different opinion on certain things and nobody really shares a big subset of the language. Uh, in, the, in the closure community, uh, there, is, uh, there is the sense of group process. And the sense of group process really, really uh, helps uh, using closure in teams, for example, because people are talking about a larger set of uh, uh, constructs they, they are able to communicate with. Uh, so, so this really is an enabling thing for Clojure to be used in, in larger contexts and also the, the reason why Clojure, uh, why Common Lisp isn't used a lot because Common Lisp is just very fragmented. So now, winners loses. Um, for me, um, uh, Clojure is a winner uh, and uh, I will probably not write a lot of new software in Common Lisp, although uh, I do like the ability uh, to go back to the metal, and maybe if I ever come to write a Lisp operating system, I will do it in, uh, in common Lisp and not in Clojure. Uh, it is something that, that uh, it's more of a dream because the environment is so nice and the specification is so large, but from a practical perspective, I think Clojure is much more 
useful. And the future? Um, I think committee languages live forever. That means uh, in 2030, we will still be able to uh, execute conforming common list programs. And, and this, is, this might be a motivation to use common list because I'm not so sure that a, pro, a program that I've written in Clojure today will be, will be runnable in a Clojure implementation in, to, in 10 years because it just moves. And, and the, the, the set of things that um, common list offers as a, as, a, as a standard language is relatively large. So if you, if you need to write software that is, that is long-lived, maybe closure, uh, common list is an option too. Um, I have, well, I have doubts that common list will be standardized as new language that is somehow compatible, but I'm also relatively uh, 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 pessimistic regarding the standardization or the definition of a, of a standardized closure. Maybe, maybe at some point this will happen, but I'm not sure. Thank you.